earthquake, uh, something collapses around you, and again, you can there, it's a similar, yes, you, are, you realize there is a challenge here, and you realize that it may be necessary to take some action, but in the meantime, you can experiment and see, this requires, by the way, more developed, more intense presence when a bigger challenge comes into your life. But you've practiced already with little things, telephone calls and lineups in the supermarket and airport and countless other things. So you've already been successfully practicing with that, just getting ready for the next big challenge to come into your life, and it will come. And there it comes, like <laughs> And then you have already developed the muscle, presence power in you has already grown, the ability to relinquish dysfunctional thinking and being able to be with the situation as it is right now without the addition of this burden of superfluous suffering creating thought. And that's so you've developed that already, and then the big challenge comes, and there you are. Let's say you lose your job, and one day you go to the office, and the boss says the famous expression. Uh, they don't usually say, you are fired, that's somewhere else in, 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 in New York somewhere, they'll say, you are fired. But usually they are much more kind, say, I'm afraid we'll have to let you go. As if you had been longing to go for a long time. <laughs> and perhaps you have, you just didn't know it. We'll have to let you go. Really? Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Finally, they're letting me go. <laughs> we'll have to let you go, and, but usually it's not people who usually react as... And there comes a slightly bigger challenge, because who knows how you're going to pay the mortgage next month? Who knows? Uh, and there we go. And if, you, if presence has grown in you, you can then walk out of the office building with a, carrying the box of your belongings from your office, and then you put it in your car, and then you sit in your car, and again you question, if I didn't add any thought to this, how would I experience this moment? It is as it is, and right at this moment, it's actually fine. It's actually, this moment is actually better than it would be if I were still stuck in the office. <laughs> this moment, certainly. Now the mind says, yeah, but you've got the future to think about. And of course, yes, <coughs> you may have to take action, but the question is how, what is the quality of your consciousness in the present moment? Because that determines what kind of action you take. Is the basis for your action a sense of fear or anger or panic? I need to find another job. And then if you go, if you get another interview, you're so so tense that they don't want you. They say, no, we can't have a nervous person like that. <laughs> <laughs> but so you differentiate between taking action and even perhaps focusing your mind on what, what is it that I can do, to, what steps can I take, what are the possibilities. I usually, when I do something like that, I get a piece, I'm a paper and pen person. I write it down on a piece of paper and then see the possibilities. And then you return into this present moment. So you develop the ability to always have your conscious attention anchored 
in the present moment rather than in your thinking mind. So you're it. This is the, you're becoming aligned with the present moment. And it requires, I must admit, a, uh, some situations require more intense presence than others. If it's a bigger thing, more intense presence. You go to the doctor's office, and the doctor says, okay, you have about 12 months, and then maybe not beyond. That's a big challenge. It's a huge challenge because it means, it, but by the way, he may be wrong, but it means time has been taken away, virtually been taken away from you. It's like, like, a, like some deity, malevolent deity, or maybe a good deity that suddenly says, you have no more time. Because you had been looking for some self-fulfillment through time, unless you're 95 years old, but maybe even then. You've been looking for self-fulfillment, for some kind of completion of who you are, of the story you want. You want the happy ending of the story of me. Of course, it never comes, but don't tell anybody. It never, the happy ending of the story of me never comes. And then somebody takes away time from you, and that could be the most dreadful shock to you as a person, because then you mentally go somewhere that doesn't exist anymore. No more vacation. No more this, no more that. And so, some people have become terribly, terribly, dreadfully unhappy in that situation, which has only been normal, I suppose. One would say normal. But others, have become intensely present through having no more time. And they went, I've met some. And with some, the body began to deteriorate more and more, more quickly. And they were like luminous lights. They were just sitting there looking at me. And I remember a lady years ago who came to see me when I was still seeing uh, people. She had developed this illness, it only had a few more months, and she was just, every time she came, she was more luminous, you know, just sit there, and we were just present together. There was nobody left, there was no person left. There was only a space of conscious presence. So the person had been burned up completely by this. That was amazing how, uh, there's another thing I read uh, a couple of years ago, there was a, a musician in England, uh, apparently quite famous, but I had never heard of him, which doesn't mean anything. Uh, so there was a pop musician, and he went to the doctor, I don't know if he's still in, alive now or not, he went to the doctor and he says, he told him, the doctor told him something like that, and this is a very rare case. He said in an interview, he walked out of the doctor's office in a state of enormous elation. He was just, and suddenly he said he, he in, was able to enjoy every moment intensely. And he said, why didn't I do this before? And what happened to him? So some people are f forced into awakening by a situation. Now, any big challenge in your life potentially is that. It is a way of how life forces you into awakening. And there are some people who have never come into touch with any spiritual teaching, and it happened to them. Others encounter intense suffering, and they suffer and suffer, and then they come into contact with the spiritual teaching that, that points to the possibility of transcendence, and suddenly the very same 
suffering situation suddenly becomes the opening.